So welcome to Waterlays MD tutorial number one, although it is our third tutorial. And what I want to do is familiarize you with the Waterlays MD. If you've previously had a Waterlays, there's a lot of features that are significantly different, which obviously makes it more fun and exciting and, and, and better for us as practitioners to use. So we'll start with the basics. I'm sure that the serviceman and or the salesperson that you deal with will go over a lot of these details with you. It's just kind of fun to be able to see it on DVD and review them for your new staff that come along. So we'll just start with basically turning on the unit and remember it's a laptop computer and it has to boot up. See the image going across. Another beep that'll come. And now it's ready to go. So we press the on off button, and that brings the screen up. And then we hit the ready button. many nice features with this laser. The aiming beam and with the up arrow on the aiming beam you can adjust the brightness to what you want it to be. I myself like a little bit of aiming beam but not, but not a lot so I have it basically right in the middle. Next is the illuminated handpiece, the super feature. Again, up arrow and I go illumination full strength. I want as much light as I can possibly get in the mouth. And then you can adjust the sound from low volume to high volume and I have mine set in the middle. You can go from settings back to your home screen. In the home screen, we have four different presets and in those four we have a series of four. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do laser anesthetic. You want to use a brand new G4 or G6 tip. We're going to be at 5.5 watts, 30% water, 60% air, 8 to 10 millimeters away from the tooth structure at 20 hertz. And you need to hover 8 to 10 millimeters away for a minute and a half to two minutes. After this brief period of time, the tooth should be anesthetized to where now you're ready to start your occlusal prep. The important thing in the occlusal prep is to remember to stay perpendicular as possible to the occlusal surface. We want to start with a G4 or a G6 tip and I recommend starting at 6 watts 30 hertz with 20 to 50 percent water and 70 percent air. I personally found that I really like less water, 20 percent water. I get good efficient cutting, a whole lot less water in the patient's mouth. So again for the most efficient cutting, if you are parallel to the occlusal surface of the tooth, you'll find Sometimes you'll be a bit frustrated because it's slower than what you're used to with the drill. So if you get off the parallel, get as perpendicular as you can. And as you can see, I'm turning the handpiece, so I'm, I'm going to get perpendicular to the buccal surface, work down from the enamel into the dentin, then turn the handpiece toward the lingual, again working down the enamel into the dentin. Once you're into the dentin, through the occlusal surface, you can go back 
to parallel and you'll have more rapid removal of the two structure. I also find that in some patients, the deeper you get into the occlusal dentin, occasionally they become sensitive. So what I do is I change to 4 watts. I leave my water 20 to 50 percent and the air 70 to 90 percent. I change the hertz from 30 down to 15. So with the MD, we're able to have a wider range of laser settings to allow us to more comfortably work on our patients. Now there'll be times in the occlusal surface where you're cleaning out the pits and fissures prior to placing a sealant. This can easily be accomplished at two and a half to four watts at 30 hertz, 20% to 50% water, and 70% air. You can expect these procedures in the occlusal surface to take you anywhere from 30 seconds to 2 minutes to perform once you've obviously done a few procedures, you become more efficient and your frustration level is greatly reduced. What I've found certainly is practicing on a few extracted teeth made my efficiency rating dramatically increase when I first got the laser. So I'm doing a class 2 tunnel prep on this patient. Again, the whole purpose is to access the decay and remove it. I want to maintain as much of the marginal ridge as possible. So I can take the laser, I can go in, remove the decay, take the T4 tapered tip, typically lowering the power down to 2.5 to 4 watts, and remove the interproximal decay. Then I can go in, place my glass ionomer lining, to remineralize the interproximal enamel, put a flowable composite in, or my regular packable composite. So I'm going to do a typical class 2 slot prep. I'm going to start with the G4 tip, 6 watts, 30 hertz, with 20 to 50 percent water and 70 percent air. If you start right on the, the thin enamel on the marginal ridge, you'll find that you can do your interproximal reduction rapidly and then again come as perpendicular as possible to the buccal and lingual surfaces working the enamel down into the dentin. Once you're into the dentin, go back to parallel and you can remove the dentin and decay with uh, relative ease. Remembering if the patient becomes sensitive it's very simple to just press a button. This is a preset I have in my laser. 4 watts, 15 hertz, 20% water, 70% air. I find that after using a one or two or three different laser anesthetic techniques, that 95% of the time I can do the procedure with minimal to no patient discomfort. Oftentimes after accessing the decay, working on the tooth for a short period of time, the tooth has become more desensitized. At that point I'm able to take my slow speed electric drill 
with round burrs and remove divergent decay. And this, again, I am able to accomplish with minimal to no patient discomfort. Here's our finished prep. So fortunately, our class three cavities continue to be on the rise. Nothing wrong with lots of cavities. Um, you're gonna see this with the water lays. This is gonna be at six watts at 20 hertz with 70% water and 90% air. If I was using the Water Lays MD, I would be at 6 watts at 30 hertz with 20 to 50% water and 70% air. So I'm going to do a class four on Dennis. Dennis had the misfortune of being in an automobile accident, hospitalized for six months in a coma for three months. In that period of time, obviously he had uh, quite a bit of trouble with his teeth. So it's important for me to get his decay under control. You're going to also get to see him on a crown prep and eventually get his mouth restored to condition that improves his appearance. First of all, we have to get his function back. So I'm going to do this. I've done the anesthetic. We're operating with a G4 at 6 watts, 30 hertz, 20 to 50 percent water, and 70 percent air. You'll see there's a couple of spots in here where the laser turns the dentin brown. When that happens, and this is a case where high magnification when you're working is, I feel, very important. I do my surgery at 6x. If you see the dentin turning brown, you're, that means you're too close, so you need to back off a little bit, or you don't have enough water. If you see the enamel turning white, then you're too far away. You need to get a little bit closer, and that'll clean up the etched appearance of the enamel. So Dennis had some tissue that had grown in here and I am going to remove that on the soft mode, the S mode, at 1 watt with 8% water and 11% air. Once I remove the major amount of decay, the real deep area, I'll drop down to the 4 watts at 15 hertz, 20 to 50 percent water, and 70 percent air. Certainly if the patients exhibit some discomfort, continue to lower the wattage. And in a, a patient like this, uh, although he didn't feel anything, Occasionally, I will put retention in at 2.75 watts, again, leaving the hertz at 15. So now after I've, I'm cleaning up the tissue again here a little bit more at that one watt setting that I mentioned before.
This allow the, this laser in the soft mode allows me to have a nice smooth cut and contour the tissue you know, right where I want it to be. In most cases, we'll get really good hemostasis with the laser in removing the soft tissue, the gingival contouring. If you have a patient where you have a, a little more bleeding than what's desired, then don't hesitate to use Viscostat Plus. That will ease your frustrations with the laser. We don't know every patient's condition, their blood pressure, what medications they, they're on, and they might tend to ooze a little bit, especially a patient like this who's obviously oral hygiene wasn't in the best to start with. So oftentimes I'm asked how easy does the laser remove old composite? So we, here we have a patient with a class 5 composite with recurrent decay. So after my laser anesthetic, I'm going to start removing the composite. This is a G6 tip at 6 watts, 30 hertz, 20% water. You can vary your water between 20 and 50. I really like that 20% water and 70% air. You can see that the laser is rapidly removing the old composite. In areas where you have real thin enamel, if you, there's certainly nothing wrong in starting at 4 watts at 15 to 30 hertz. Again, the 20 to 50 percent water and 70 percent air. I particularly use that, that 4 watts if it's a lower, thin lower anterior class 5 that I'm removing an old composite. It's very, very rapid removal and if there's not a lot of old filling, you get into the dentin real rapid. If you're not using magnification, you it's difficult to remove too much tooth structure, but if you're paying attention, it shouldn't be a problem. When I want to put retention in, I'll use the T4 taper tip, usually at 2.5 watts, 20% water, 70% air at 20 hertz. So now we have an existing class 5 composite with recurrent decay next to an old amalgam. So the problem with the amalgam is you need to stay parallel to it. If you get at all perpendicular to an existing amalgam, you'll cause a fracture of your sapphire tip. If the sapphire tip becomes fractured, then you lose your power. Hence, you've ruined your tip. So obviously, as long as you stay parallel to an existing metallic structure such as an old crown or an amalgam, there's little chance of doing damage to your laser tip. And I would start this at 6 watts with 30 hertz with 20 to 50 percent water and 70 percent air. After removing the old composite and decay, 
It's easy to go in with a T4 tip. 2.75 to 3.25 watts to place retention. Mesial and distal on the incisal angle. Again, noticing that I'm parallel with the adjacent amalgam. I'm coming in now at a half a watt on the soft mode, 11% air and no water to clean the tissue up and coagulate. Here we have a class 5 cavity without an existing composite. On a fairly small, thin enamel tooth, I would start this at 4 watts at 15 to 30 hertz with a T4 or a G6 tip, 20 to 50% water, and 70% air. A cavity like this is not going to take you much time. This is a 20 to 30 second procedure normally. And in all these procedures I've previously done the laser anesthetic technique that we've talked about. It's also important to remember that the longer you use the laser on the tooth the more it desensitizes to allow you to go in with spoon excavators and slow speed round burrs comfortably for the patient. Here we have a class 6 cavity prep. We have already thin enamel, a little decay, so I need to go in with lower power. I'm going to go in with a G4 or G6 tip at 2.5 to 4 watts at 15 to 20 hertz, 20 to 50% water, and 70% air. It is important to remove the sclerotic dentin. You need about two millimeters of reduction inside the tooth to support your composite. I'll also put a little bit of retention, mesial and distal. And I find that when I use clear fill, self-etching primer and bond cleans up the enamel 
really well where the laser etches it. When you put your composite in on the finish, you don't have any white lines on the thinnest of enamel margins. Again, when the uh, dentin is brown from using the laser, back off. That'll take the brown away. If you get too much white on the enamel, get closer and it'll clean the enamel margins up. So here we have Dennis again. Now I've done the laser anesthetic, five and a half watts, 30% water, 60% air, eight to 10 millimeters away from the tooth for a minute and a half to two minutes. I'm doing just a little composite buildup to allow me to take an impression to make Dennis a little bit nicer temporary. And I'm gonna come at him with the G6 tip at 6 watts, 30 hertz, 20 to 50 percent water, and 70 percent air. So the same guidelines in doing a crown prep we follow as we would using high speed the incisal occlusal reduction first, interproximal reduction. Once the Occlusal is reduced, that exposes the dentin enamel junction. If you put the G6 tip about a half a millimeter away from the enamel, it will fairly rapidly remove the enamel and it will allow you to place a chamfer margin. And on Dennis, we did an all porcelain bonded crown. So I had a, a nice chamfer margin, which you'll see here as we proceed. So crown preps can be a little frustrating when you first pick up your laser because you're not used to spending time doing crown preps with a laser. But my best advice is to do a few crown preps on extracted teeth. Learn to get the angles so that when you get to the dentin enamel junction, you've figured out how to rapidly remove that buccal and lingual enamel. And place your chamfer margins. It takes me a tooth like this eight to ten minutes to do a crown prep. Now, rarely do we time ourselves when we're doing our dentistry. We're just used to how long it takes. And when I use my electric high speed, it would take typically eight to 10 minutes to do the same prep. So the reason I would use the, the laser to do a crown prep is medically patient is compromised. Dennis, his cardiologist, didn't want him to have any type of anesthetic. Some people are allergic to anesthetic. Of course, some people anesthetic doesn't work and the, and the drill always hurts. So in those patients, I can work on their teeth without giving them anesthetic and without causing undue trauma to the tooth and, of course, the patient. One of the problems as dentists when we operate is any time you touch a carbide or a diamond to the tooth, you cause microfractures. With the laser, there are no microfractures in the dentin. So postoperatively, my patients have very little to no discomfort whatsoever. On the deepest of cavities, on the deepest of crown preps like this particular one, obviously the tooth was badly broken down. There was a lot of decay. Postoperatively, he had no discomfort whatsoever. 
Well, it's, it's an almost predictable situation when you've done this much laser work. We know that lasers desensitize teeth. So the more I work on a crown prep, the less sensitive the tooth will be when I'm all through. So to fine tune your margin, if you turn the power down to two and a half to three watts, at 30 hertz, 20% water and 70% air, you can make a real fine, smooth margin. Again, using high magnification, four to six X with a headlight allows you to see really well. And after I've have my margins done. I will go in, trough around the tooth with a T4 tip at 1 watt, the 8% water and 11% air. And you can do this from 20 to 50 hertz. So I had just a minimal amount of bleeding on Dennis because of his lack of oral hygiene for the crown prep. So the laser did a, a good job of coagulating. I still had slight problem. Here I am using the Viscostat Plus. And again, I do that to speed up my work and ease my frustrations. But the laser will do a good job. It won't do everything. So when it doesn't instantly coagulate, don't hesitate to use the chemicals we have at our disposal. We're just doing our fine tuning, final smoothing, two and a half watts, 11% air, 8% water, 30 hertz. A little Viscostat one more time, help me control the curricular fluids just before I take my impression. Here's our impression. You can see we have perfect margins. Our laboratory just loves our crown preps. We don't pack cord. We trough around every crown prep to get an excellent impression every time. So we're going to do a, a lingual phrenectomy. This is with a straight surgical handpiece with a C8 tip. And this is without anesthetic. So I'm doing this at 1 watt with 11% air and 8% water. And when you're removing the frenum, you need to be touching the tissue. Unlike cavity preps, which we stay a half a millimeter away at minimum. When we do our tissue cutting, we need to be touching the tissue. Now, if for some reason, this patient had been sensitive and I'd chosen to use a little anesthetic. And certainly with the super topicals that are available today, in dentistry for us to use. There's certainly nothing wrong with putting a little topical on, waiting a minute and a half or two minutes. My pharmacist compounds uh, topical for me. Uh, I can get you that information if you don't already have uh, access to a, the super topicals. If you've given a little anesthetic to make the procedure a little faster, you can up the power to 1.75 watts you lower the water to 4%, you'll have faster cutting 
and sometimes better coagulation. Now you can see in this patient, at one watt, I'm cutting it fast enough. I mean, if I wasn't videoing, it would take me less than two minutes to do this procedure. There's a few red blood cells there and a little bit of water. So the bleeding is well controlled. And after the incision, we want to go back at a half a watt with 11% air, no water, to paint the tissue. This disinfects the wound, causes our magic laser wound healing to be initiated, and the patient will have no postoperative discomfort. It's very important to paint all tissue surfaces that we've lasered at a half a watt, 11% air, no water before we let our patients go. So this frenum was attached to the back of the mandible and the floor of the mouth, so we have two wounds to heal. The patient left the office, went back to work, reported the next morning no postoperative discomfort, normal eating and drinking. Here we have a gingivectomy, gingival contouring on a keratotic hyperplastic tissue patient. Besides having this tissue that's difficult to deal with, this lady is severely medically compromised. She has a heart condition where she can't have most an local anesthetics. She's also on Coumadin. So I, I haven't taken her off of her Coumadin and I'm doing this without anesthetic. So I'm at one watt in the soft mode with a G6 tip, 30 hertz, 8% water, and 11% air. This is a recurrent keratotic tissue. If I don't remove it two to three times a year, it envelops her teeth, pushes its way into her tongue space. So you can see that we have very little bleeding. Again, I did not stop her Coumadin treatment. With the Water Lays MD in the soft dual pulse mode, it allows me to cut deeper into more vascular tissue with better coagulation. Also you'll you'll see that at the gingival margin, the attached gingiva, that it's a very nice smooth cut. It's also important for this patient not to stir up bacteria. So as I'm using the laser, I'm also decontaminating with little chance of infection occurring after the surgery. So you can see the nice smooth 
gingival margin. Very little bleeding and remembering still on her cumin. So a number of our patients are sensitive at the cervical junction. You take your explorer, find where the sensitive area is, and we're going to take the MD at 0.1 watt, air off, water off, slowly circle the sensitive area for 30 seconds, two to three millimeters away from the surface of the tooth. At the end of 30 seconds, take your explorer, check the adjacent tooth first, then come to the sensitive tooth, check and see whether or not the sensitivity is gone. In most cases, the sensitivity will be gone in one pass. If it's not, repeat the procedure. Again, 0.1 watt, air off and water off for 30 seconds. Canker sores and aptus ulcers, we want to treat them at a half a watt with 11% air and no water. You approach the canker sore or the aphthous until the surface paints white. The best way to do it is to outline it and then paint it in. You can expect the discomfort to be gone from the patient in less than 60 seconds and the lesion to be out of their mouth in three days. And in that period of time, no discomfort. One of the nice features of the water lays is to be able to remove veneers. And we have to remove veneers occasionally. I, these have to come off because of micro leakage. Sometimes they have to be removed because they've chipped and you have to redo them. And they can be difficult to remove. If you try to remove a veneer with a high speed diamond, it can overheat the tooth and cause irreversible pulpitis. So come at the buccal surface of the porcelain veneer with a G6 tip, 6 watts, 50% water, and 70% air. You'll need to be 2 to 3 millimeters away from the surface. You'll notice the cracking of the veneer and the pieces just pop right off. There's no damage to the sapphire tip. And in most cases, no discomfort to the patient. Uh, not always, but occasionally in removing veneers, I can anesthetize the tooth. Occasionally, because of the work that I have to do with the air turbine or electric high speed, patients are a little bit sensitive and I've had to give a little anesthetic. If I can't do the rest of the veneer prep or reprep with the laser, I'll feel free to offer the patients a shot. Obviously we need to do what's necessary to maintain the most comfort for our patients. I find this works only on all porcelain. If you have aligned porcelain, uh, they, they do not fracture and separate, so it has to be an all porcelain veneer.
things for us to do is be patient. So if the veneer doesn't immediately come off, like this one's taking a minute, just continue to move the water lay slowly. You'll see that big fracture is occurring and the pieces will peel off. Or they'll pop off while you're working with the laser like that. So in just a short period of time, we've removed the old veneers without causing more trauma to the teeth. I was able to clean up the teeth without anesthetic make new temporaries. A week later when the patient came back, she was thrilled with the results of the new veneers. <laughs>